it seems to me, uh, and let me just play the audio here, uh, that you are for uh, the individual mandate for health care, and you have been for quite some time. Let's, let's play the audio. I am for people, individuals, exactly like automobile insurance, individuals having health insurance and being required to have health insurance, and I am prepared to vote for a voucher system which will give individuals on a sliding scale a government subsidy so we ensure that everyone as individuals have health insurance. Okay, that's 1993. Here is May 2011. I agree that all of us have a responsibility to pay, help pay for health care. And, and I think that uh, there are ways to do it that make most libertarians relatively happy. I've said consistently, we ought to have some requirement that you either have health insurance or you post a bond, mm -hmm. or in some way you indicate you're going to be held accountable. But that is the individual mandate, is it not? It's a variation on it. That's it. Okay, here's, um, uh, here's uh, about Paul Ryan trying to fix Medicare. I don't think right-wing social engineering is any more desirable than left-wing social engineering. I don't think imposing radical change from the right or the left is a very good way for free society to operate. So there are things you can do to improve Medicare. But not what Paul Ryan is suggesting, which I, is I think completely that, I changing think, Medicare. I think that that is too big a jump. I think what you want to have is a system where people voluntarily migrate to better outcomes, better solutions, better options, not one where you suddenly impose upon you. I don't want to, I, I'm against Obamacare, which is imposing radical change, and I would be against a conservative imposing radical change. Okay. Um, yet you seem to always be, this is long-term individual mandate stuff, um, you seem to be uh, very interested in the government finding the solution. Well, for, let's go back to what I just said. What I, what I was asked was, uh, if a program is unpopular, should the Republicans impose it anyway? If you go back and read, listen to exactly what I was asked on that show, and I, what I said I'll stand by, which is, in a free society, you don't elect officials to impose on you things that you disagree with. That, we just went through this fight over Obamacare. Now, I also, ironically, uh, I would implement the, the Medicare reforms that Paul Ryan wants I'd implement them next year as an optional choice, and I'd allow people to have the right to choose premium support and then have freedom to negotiate with their doctor or their hospital uh, in a way that would increase their, their ability to manage costs uh, without being involved. You know, with, with, but, I, but I wouldn't impose it on everybody across the board. I think that's a very large-scale uh, experiment, but I think you could migrate people towards it. I'm proposing the same thing on Social Security. I, I think young people ought to have the right to choose a, a personal Social Security insurance plan, uh, savings account plan, uh, and the Social Security actuary estimates that 95% of young people would pick a, a personal Social Security savings account over the current system, but they would do so voluntarily because we would empower them to make a choice. We wouldn't impose it on them. And that's a, it's a question of how do, you, how do you think you can get uh, this country to move more rapidly towards reform, and I think you can get it to move towards reform faster All right. by giving people the right to choose. Um, let me just, I just want to get to uh, uh, a few things. You've supported, the, you voted for the Department of Education. Uh, you, uh, in 2007, said very cautious about changing Fannie and Freddie. Uh, on global warming with sitting down on the couch with Nancy Pelosi, and I would agree with you, that was the dumbest moment of, uh, you know, that would have been the dumbest moment of my life. Um, and I agree with that. But when you look at, it's not a moment of your life. In speech after speech, uh, in, in your book, Contract with the Earth, even with John Kerry in a debate, um, you said this. The evidence is sufficient that we should move towards the most effective possible steps to reduce carbon loading of the atmosphere. And do it urgently. Now. Do it urgently. Yeah. Right. You have John Kerry in this debate sticking up for the private sector, and you say the government should help pay. I think there has to be a, if you will, a green conservatism. There has to be a willingness to stand up and say, all right, here's the right way to solve these as seen by our value system. And now to have a dialogue about what's the most effective way to solve it. First of all, I think if you have the right level of tax credit, it isn't just exactly voluntary. My guess is there's a dollar number at which you would have every utility in the country agree they're all going to build carbon sequestering power plants. So, so this, I, mean, I think that this is a definable alternative. You know, this, this is a huge transition. You actually want the government to do it. I want the private sector to do it. No, no, no. I want the government. Because you want the government it. to pay for it with a great big tax credit. Help me out. This, this is this is a multi-year stance. It's not a moment in your life. Well, first of all, I taught environmental studies, and I believe in the environment in general. 
Uh, and well, I think so, that it's, it's, so do okay. I. Okay. <laughs> uh, se- second, um, I think that there, there, is, there is evidence on both sides of the climate change argument. And the point I was making was in a situation where, for example, having a, a larger nuclear program reduces carbon in the atmosphere, mm-hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a prudent thing to look at nuclear as one of the options. But you... uh, it's a prudent thing to develop a, a green coal plant that takes the carbon and puts it into carbon sequestration uh, to use it to uh, develop oil fields more deeply. And it can be actually economically done. We do it right now in West Texas. All right, so you believe that you can't... Um, you can't really change fundamentally. You would have to vote for the uh, prescription drug bill because you couldn't move, but you believe that you can get nuclear power plants built in a, a Gingrich administration. Oh, sure. Look, this, you, this, I also think you can reshape uh, Medicare, but I think you have to do it in a way that people find it desirable and that people think and that people trust you. I help, I help reform Medicare in 1996 um, in a way that saved 200 billion dollars and we had no major opposition to it and people concluded that we had thought it through and we were doing the right thing and they were comfortable with it do you um, do you still believe uh, in the you know the inconvenient truth um, as as outlined by global climate change advocates well, I never believed in Al Gore's fantasies, and in fact, if, if you look at the record, the day that Al Gore testified um, at the um, Energy and Commerce Committee in favor of cap-and-trade, I was the next witness, and I testified against cap-and-trade, and in the uh, Senate, I worked through American Solutions to help beat the cap-and-trade bill. Uh, cap-and-trade was an effort by the left to use the environment as an excuse to get total control over the American economy centralized in a Washington bureaucracy. Uh, it had, it, it, in the end, it had nothing to do with the environment. It had everything to do with their desire to control our lives. Uh, Newt, I have to tell you, I, you know, because, you know, it's obvious, it was very clear, I'm sure, in advance, and I hope my staff made this very clear, that this isn't going to be an easy interview, but I think you, you know, you, you there was no gaffes here by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't expect any, um, but I appreciate the uh, the willingness to come on and answer the tough questions, and I and I wish you the best. Listen, I, I, well, you and I have always had a great relationship, and I, I admire your courage, and I admire the way in which you've always stood up and told the truth, and I think you've you've had a huge impact as I go around the country with Tea Party uh, folks in in maximizing interest in American history and interest in the founding fathers, and I think much of what you've done, you know, you and I don't have to agree on, on some things to, to have a great deal of mutual respect. I, I think you've been a very powerful force for good, uh, and I wish you well in your new ventures. Thank you very much. New Gingrich, um, thank you for being on the program. GBTV, the truth lives here.